Hello, welcome everybody. Thank you so much today for joining. It's gonna be an awesome episode for you here. Uh, and again, thank you for joining us to our live Lunch and Learn. I'm your man, your host, Adam, Worldwide Stereo. Today, we got an, an exciting uh, show for you. Um, it's Home Theater 101. And um, you know we have a, a great partner here. I got some great guests with me. I'm so happy to bring them in. And this is really a special partner for Worldwide Stereo because you know, we, we sell brands like Samsung and uh, Focal and all these speakers, but this is a partner that we actually end up working with in the house at the same time with our clients. So it's a really neat uh, partnership and friendship that we have with this company, and that's Cinematech. Uh, so Cinematech is a company that we use and partner with to help build out our theaters. But I think you're going to learn today, it's going to be pretty cool, that not only are they there to help us with theaters, but, you know, just rooms in general. There's so much that you need to consider when you're thinking about doing a room, whether it's for a theater, which would be great, um, but also family rooms, office spaces, anywhere where you really care about how it's going to sound, Cinematech is there to help you and uh, what goes into that. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring in my friends from Cinematech to meet y'all and here we go. Hey, how are you? Good. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much today for joining us and taking the time. We really appreciate you and, and the relationship that we have with you guys and Cinematech is fantastic. So thank you so much for, uh, for coming today. Absolutely. I'm excited. Good, good. So we got a, a jam-packed agenda here that we want to go through and talk about today. Uh, but first, obviously, I want to take the time to let you all meet my friends here. So uh, Stacy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how long you've been with the company and what you do there? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacey Chu. Um, I'm with Cinematech, as Adam said. I've been with Cinematech for 17 years um, in designing home theaters. I am the uh, director of our, our theater design department, and I'm excited to share some information with you all today on, on Theater 101. <laughs> thank you, Stacey. Yeah, we worked, uh, I remember recently working on a project with Stacey, and you were fantastic. So thank you again for that. And Alex. Yes. How are you? Hi guys, um, my name's Alex. I'm a partner here at Cinema Tech. I help oversee our sales operations, kind of in and out of the business, both kind of pre-sale and post-sale, making sure things are installed, delivered, clients are happy, things like that. Mm -hmm. I've been in the business, um, grew up in the business, but I've officially been in it seven years. Um, and I've covered the Northeast, East of the Mississippi, and now I'm based in our Dallas headquarters. Excellent, excellent. So the Northeast, I just want to bring up right now, it was certainly where uh, I'm broadcasting from. And just to throw it out there, there is one heck of a thunderstorm that looks like it's heading our way. So I'm just going <laughs> to, as we're all working from home, and you know, uh, hopefully we don't lose any power. But if we do, just uh, everybody sit tight. I will, you know, we'll be back as soon as we can if that happens. So I just kind of want to throw it out there because we are all working from home. So that, that is a potential that <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, like I said, I look outside. It's, uh, it's kind of starting to look like the wizard of Oz. So just throwing it out there. Um, so like I said, it friends, we have a, a amazing show today and in cinema tech, um, helps really in the in the design of a theater in these spaces. And we're going to talk a lot today about acoustical treatments um, versus sound isolation, which is always a big um, conversation. A lot of people come into my showroom saying, oh, I want to, I need to stop the, the sound coming from my basement. It's it's annoying the, you know, my other half or my, my kids when they sleep, I want to stop that kind of sound. How do I do that? Well, that's where Cinema Tech comes in. Uh, we're going to talk about general theater guidelines, you know, things uh, you want to think about when you're, when you're building a theater, whether it's the equipment or Again, just the room design in general, some kind of do's and don'ts, which will be fun. And then the process, I think, of building a theater um, from start to finish. We're going to kind of go over that because that's where Cinematech and um, Worldwide Stereo, we really come together and make this project go. I think it's so important when you're considering a space like this to bring in some experts, you know, because we've, we've been through it. We, we know we know the things to do and the things maybe not to do or how you can shave here or something like that. So we, we've been through it and we're here to help you. So it's always important to bring us in. But a lot of my friends here, Alex, we probably don't know much about Cinematech in general. So can you give us a little background on the company? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so Cinematech is 21 years old. We are a home theater seating, design, and acoustic business. So we got into the space 21 years ago uh, because 
we one of our owners was uh, building a beautiful house and wanted to do a gorgeous theater. Um, and he found great equipment, but he couldn't find somebody to help in the design and great seating and beautiful leather and everything was just kind of big and bulky and cheap. And so um, he brought that idea to Michael Murphy. Um, and he said, I, you know, who had a background in furniture, Michael's our owner, and said, you know, I have this idea, this concept. Uh, they went to Germany and formed an alliance with our still partner there to start manufacturing seating. Mm -hmm. And they brought back the Valentino design, which is to this day our most popular seating design. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a great chair. It's just, it was just really kicked off the company. Um, and then from there we grew into doing a critical treatment. We would go into these rooms and the sound wasn't what everyone expected when they bought all the equipment and stuff. And we realized that you need to also address the acoustics in the space. Um, and then through that, we then realized that we would go and we would do acoustics. We would put the seating in the theaters, but maybe, you know, after we met with the customers and we did install the seats, we went out and say, how did it go? Yeah. And they said, well, it was good, but like there was something missing in the job, like yeah. a design element. And that's where we created our design service program. Mm -hmm. um, and really Stacy started that like probably 10, 12 years ago. Um, and so we then kind of created this hybrid of expertise in these spaces where the AV companies knew equipment and they knew screens and projectors and speakers. And then we were able to come in as a partner and provide great design, drawings, renderings, and then build out of the space. That's an incredible story. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. you certainly, you know, there's nothing like seeing it come together, working on a couple projects with you guys from start to finish. That whole process just makes it so smooth and and, and kind of takes the stress out of it, you know, especially yeah. for the homeowner that when you're when you're going through this process, you're like, man, I, I kind of get one shot at this. Like, or, you know, I really, I, I don't, maybe I don't have the budget to do it twice, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or correct something. So getting it right the first time and having experts kind of lead you through this process and it, it, it's great and the more interaction you get from the client it's always better you know if they have certain things that they're looking for and we can really give them and deliver a product that they're that they're very happy with yeah absolutely it's a unique space that you know we do about 150 jobs a year and we work all over the u.s and internationally and it if you don't have if you don't know theaters it's kind of hard to dig in and, and do it correctly Mm -hmm. um, just nuances to them. Yeah. yeah. So at our showroom, everybody, we have a, a, a theater in Montgomeryville that was designed by Cinematech. So we have that on display for you. And uh, you can certainly always, uh, well, maybe appointment only visit <laughs> uh, Cinematech out there. You guys just recently redid yours too, didn't you? Stacy? you were heavily involved in that, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. We've just spent probably the last six months redoing our entire showroom. We definitely have um, we put in a state-of-the-art theater. Uh, it's probably about a half a million dollar theater that we've got in there now. Um, with Yeah, <laughs> with some very high-end equipment, completely outfitted um, with acoustic product, our wonderful seating. Um, mm -hmm. It really is a gorgeous piece. And we we love to have, yeah, people in, of course, appointment only at this right. time. But, um, yeah, are happy to have people in and show around and, and show, you know, what a real theater looks like. It definitely helps to see it. Um, and experience it. That's uh, that's a that's an experience I'd like to come down and, and try. <laughs> maybe. Absolutely, we'd love to have you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Hey, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll talk to the marketing team. Maybe we do a Thank little you. <laughs> video, you know, presentation yeah. from there. Yeah. Emily, live right? Emily, video, hello. live sure. video. You know, hey, that'd be good. Yeah. So. So thank you. So right now we, we've kind of started talking about, you know, gave you a little brief history of Cinematech and, and kind of what they're up to and what they can offer you. I want to dive into now and talking about, you know, what is a what is a theater and why is a theater different from, say, like a media room? But again, Cinematech can certainly help with with all of that. But a theater is. I mean, it's in the name. It's it's a theatrical experience. It's meant to be entertaining. This is entertainment. We're trying to I mean, look. Now more than ever, we have so many distractions in our lives with, with what's happening and where we're at. But normal day to day stuff, you know, bills and I got to get the kids and what's for dinner and all those things. And when you step into a theater, I want to escape. 
Okay, I want to. I want to not think about that stuff. I want to be Luke Skywalker in, in Star Wars. I want to be a part of that experience, and and everything that goes into that. So the equipment that goes in is specific, but again, getting the sound right is more, I think, important than anything. You can take a small TV. Let's just talk about you know a room. You have a small TV with a massive, awesome theater system, and it makes that makes that screen look twice as big. So it's so important to um, get the sound right. So what goes into a theater as far as uh, you know equipment is is concerned, um, it can be a, a multitude of things. We've done you know uh, theaters where we've had screens like this. You know we've done rooms where it has both, and that's what I'm hoping to do with my space here. I have a nice 75 inch TV behind me, but I pre-wired for a screen and a projector, so you know I can have that drop down in front. Then so the the main key things you need a visual display. You know that could be a TV, could be a projector and a screen, and those are those are critical. And um, after that, there's different forms of surround sound out there or sound that you can do in terms of the amount of speakers. We're living in an age right now, and I, and I talked about it a little bit on one of my other presentations with Atmos surround sound when I was talking with Focal. That's new and exciting right now, this, this object-driven surround sound where you can get all this stuff kind of flying around you and not just moving front to back, left to right, but up and down too. So there's different speaker systems out there and where you put those. So it's so important to get uh, myself or a professional involved in designing these spaces to make sure that you get that experience going on here. So uh, Bruce has a question that came in here and he's saying, where is the showroom? Now, well, my showroom, Bruce, is in Montgomeryville, PA, but uh, uh, Stacy, where's your showroom again? Our showroom is gonna be in Addison, Texas. It's just north of Dallas. Just north of Dallas, okay. Mm -hmm. So you know we're a lot of Eagles fans around here, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We do have a, a showroom too in Los Angeles, but it's a much smaller fit out than Dallas. It doesn't okay. have a theater, but it does have all the, the seating. The seating, which, yeah, you really got to sit in some of this stuff. And I mean, again, we have it on display, but, um, you know, it, it's um, it's nice to sit in at our showroom, but you have more selections at, at your place there as well. So, wow. So we already lost one. Uh, our back end, Amanda, her power went out. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> uh oh so far so good yeah. <laughs> so i'm still here so hopefully most okay, micro uh, wiring is underground <laughs> yeah we're all right <laughs> so we'll keep going no problem um so i spoke a little bit about the equipment but now let's start to talk and dive about more things to consider about you know when you're building your room alex what are some of the big questions out there that you want to try and solve maybe in that initial meeting when you're when you're considering to build a theater yeah so, I mean, the theater is a really fun space because it can either be an extension of your home or it can be a totally unique space. I mean, we have clients that come in and just do a totally different design than what they have elsewhere in their house. So we kind of like to get that concept first, you know, which way are we taking it? Mm -hmm. And then we look at some photos. Are we kind of in a more modern, traditional, those types of looks? Um, we always start with how many people do we want to sit in the in the theater and see, which typically you want people come in and they're like, we want to fit 15. And then we lay it out and that changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, once we know what we can fit, we also want to ask, are we, do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? Are we lounging? Are we watching sports? Are we using this for work purposes? Um, is there gonna be food and beverages in here? So just getting a sense of really what they wanna use the space for so that we think great design is also functional, livable. We don't, you know, we want people to be in the space and be comfortable and get what they want out of it. Everyone has kind of different things they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we have our, what I like to call like a design board and design intent, then we get into more specifics, like how many rows are we going to fit? Okay. Are the risers the right depth to fit the seating? Are the sight lines, which is, you know, you, the riser height, is that the right height so that we can see over the next row? Mm -hmm. um, is our screen placed correctly? Do we want columns, things like that? So uh, we tend to start big and then narrow it down. And Stacy. It, you know, she manages the design team and they all, I mean, they've just, they've seen so many different types of spaces. Yeah, um, yeah. They're all so custom. Like there's no just pick a picture and then make that work, which is what makes our job 
always really interesting and fun. Um, everyone has something different that they, you know, their own spin on the space. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, and that's, I think, important in, in part of the early conversation here when, you, when you're, uh, when, when you meet somebody looking to do a theater, uh, we certainly like to send them to your website. And because there's lots of design ideas that you can get from there. Um, just a couple. Let me uh, show something here to all of our friends out here. Let me share my screen. Give me one second to hit the right buttons here. Uh, let's see. There is the There we go. Oh, cool. So here are some, these are some 3D renderings of some more of uh, like trends today, I think, about what we're seeing, some more popular designs or recent designs that you guys have done. Um, certainly the, uh, what I love about this, I love this this cove kind of lighting here inside of the fiber optic um, star ceiling. So it's very popular these days. Um, yeah, that adds and, a really nice dimension there. And look at this, guys. I mean, you expect <laughs> you expect bed. to see a sofa bed, right? You, I mean, you expect to see when you think theater in your head, you're thinking, you know, uh, commercial theater, like theater chairs. But no, like this is this is more the trend that we're seeing. We're seeing sofa based, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of sofas in front with dedicated seats in the back row, and typically a bar behind there if they have the space for it. Um, people like. I, I don't know. I tend to see people for the sofas that either like do a motorized sofa. So like in this picture, your headrest is motorized on that long piece. And oh, yeah, then, yeah. yeah, all those seats are motorized. Um, so they function like a dedicated seat, uh, like a normal theater seat, but they have a much more casual snuggly type of feel mm -hmm. or people like to do that big sofa bed like we saw in the other picture where they can just throw a bunch of kids on and um, really kind of a casual feel and then you have your dedicated higher back more traditional seating in the back rows there um, these these walls here are they like angled or something or is that that's those, just yeah. Those are actually straight. Uh, actually, though, just real quick sidebar, the, the picture you showed previously, that's oh. our, our brand new showroom in, in Dallas. This is right here? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 I yeah. And as you were saying, Adam, one of the biggest trends, the, the LED lights, um, we are seeing a lot of that right now, maybe a little bit less on, you know, we used to see kind of that royal less, the red and golds and big moldings and crowns and things like yeah. that. And and we are seeing the designs go a little bit more simplified. Um, and with the use of lighting and different things like that can really make it and bring it to, you know, a spectacular room. But yeah, th this is our, our showroom just kind of to, to make note of that. And all the LED lights change different colors and it's really neat. It's fun space. Yeah, you got me on that one. I love that. <laughs> let's, let's see here. Oh, there's some thunder. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I told you. hear it all the way in Texas. <laughs> Let's say it's a good microphone I have here. Yeah, right. right. Wow, look at this space, though. I love the ceiling there. Isn't that cool? The coffered yeah, the, ceiling. The coffered ceilings, yeah. yeah. And three rows. Wow, that must be a big space. Maybe like, what, 30, 30 feet deep at least? Yeah, yeah. Or more, 30, more. 35 feet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then this one has that bar in the back, which is also something that. We oh, see okay. a lot of, or, you know, if people, as Alex was mentioning previously, one of the questions we ask in the beginning is, you know, are you going to be serving food in the room or, you know, are you going to be using it as something else besides just watching a movie, yeah. sporting events or so forth? So the bar in the back has become um, a big, you know, a, a big thing that we're look, seeing as well. Uh, I almost see that as a must have right now. I just mm -hmm. like, you got to yeah. have that. Like, and it's just, it makes it more of a lounging space too. I mean, theaters, you don't want to think like a theater is just like this like dark spot that it's just like a man cave-ish, you know, kind of area or something like that. And with just these theater chairs, it, it can be a very usable space for entertainment purposes beyond just watching the theater space. And I mean, you have people over, maybe you have a, a slideshow of, of photos from a vacation up there or something like that, or a presentation room. I mean, you can use these rooms for much more than just a theater. Yeah, we actually in the last like year we've done room we did a theater in a dentist office because he wanted to do presentations we've done i mean just like 
we're doing a couple rooms right now where they want to do kind of bring in work associates and do talks and some of their maybe more confidential conversations uh-huh. in a theater. Um, because we're finding people are getting out of like the boardroom and kind of that more, uh, I don't want to say stuffy, but like formal environment. So we've had quite a few business owners make these spaces work for them in other ways outside of just like watching a movie, which has been really cool to see. um, Yeah. I I think I'd like to do a live broadcast from this room right here. Oh, I love that room. That is the fireplace (laughs) and the wall. I mean, yeah, it just shows you what you can do here. That is, that is impressive. What's what's on that back wall? uh, On the back wall. Oh, okay. It's the so popcorn it's, machine. Yeah, it's the popcorn. It's like a little, yeah, a little bar right. area. Look at this. Yeah. So, you know, the interesting That's thing gorgeous. when Alex was saying that we do about 150 jobs a year and, um, y- you know, we've seen and everything is custom. We're not doing theater in the box or anything like that. We obviously have hundreds of beautiful renderings um, mm-hmm. for our clients to, to look at just to get in ideas and inspiration. But, you know, that last rendering that you just had up or picture yeah. theater picture with that ceiling, you know, this was a client that had come to me and, and had visited, um, had visited a space. It was a theater where they were, were, you know, where they lived and they just loved the way the ceiling was. And, you know, she brought me a picture and said, I want to do something like this. And so that's what we did. Um, and that's a fiber optic ceiling and it's printed fabric. Um, so oh. we picked a scene and we yes. printed the fabric and with fiber optics and lighting made it, you know, made it glow and, and be what it is. And it was really spectacular. It's gorgeous. Um, gorgeous. There's a question that came in here. Huh? I don't want to put up here. Can you put any equipment in a Cinematheque treated room? How much do the acoustics help with the performance of the equipment? Um, that I mean, yes. I mean, you could you could put any equipment into a cinema yeah. treated room. I mean, part of the process is is that we give you guys that equipment list of what you're what we're looking to put in there, uh, so we can we can you know, we can position everything properly as that's part of the design is getting the positioning of everything, um, absolutely right. And 100. I mean, when let's just talk speakers for a second. I mean, when speakers are made, they're tested in treated rooms to make sure that their performance is is perfect. You know, um, so much of the sound that you hear is reflected sound you know Mm -hmm. in in any room when sound comes out of a speaker i mean you're hearing reflections you talk in a room you're hearing your how your voice reflects against that wall and just walk throughout your house folks and 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 say the same word at the same volume in each room and it's going to sound different it's absolutely going to sound different so treating the room helps bring out all of the special characteristics that that manufacturer had in mind when they designed this speaker or the reason that you fell in love with it was because it had great X, Y, and Z, whatever it is, and and treating the room helps bring that out of the equipment and bring that out of the speaker. So absolutely, um, it, it it helps with the performance of the system for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that we describe it is that when you fire a speaker, it has to hit. It hits a surface, like you said, Adam, a, yeah. before it comes to your ear. And our job is to control what surface that is, uh, depending on different elements in the space because what that hits will really impact the final sound that comes to you. So this is an interesting space here. This looks to me more like a family room than, than an actual like dedicated, you know, typical basement looking kind of place. Um, so I like that a lot. And you see the speakers up here and there's drapery tracks here. So that's cool. So that's another element actually that I wanna bring up real quick. I mean, when you're considering a space, you know, don't think that it has to be this box of a, you know, four wall, basement thing with no ambient light or anything like that. One of our theaters that we have on display in our showroom, um, we we designed it to to feel like a family room and there's actually a massive window on the right-hand side of the wall. And you wouldn't think about it when you're coming in because we have a blackout shape that comes down. So most people, when they walk into the room, they think it, they think it is a four walled, you know, room with, with no windows at all. And then at the end of the demo, you, you hit the, the, the shade button and up goes the blackout shade and all of a sudden the sunlight not today but the sunlight would come pouring through and they're like oh my god i didn't even realize i was in a in, in a in a room with a window in it so don't think that your theater space has to be this basement cave you know you could do your family room we can treat the uh the windows with motorized drapery tracks or, or blackout shades um or just any you know room darkening chains whatever you you know you want your look to be so just some examples of what you can do out there um 
in terms of, you know, finding a space that works for your house. You don't have to uh, build this room out. Yeah. Yeah. This, this room was, this room was a fun one. This was one of my clients as well. And um, they wanted to definitely pack in the activities that could be done in, in this single room. Um, so you've, uh, shuffleboard. Got, you've got theater shuffleboard. There was actually a fireplace below the screen, which I don't know if you could see in this picture, um, the poker table in the back. And then that poker table could move. And those doors um, back behind the poker table were a closet. You could open them and pull Here? out a ping pong table. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so we definitely, <laughs> pack just about everything we could possibly think of in this room um they were doing it for their grandkids so it was really special yeah yeah let's see here oh wow that's neat that looks like a like a golf clubhouse to me or something <laughs> yeah like this that, that this green is a color. Yeah. so this yeah this was a this is just kind of showing that this was this room was a basement and act yeah, I guess in Florida, it wasn't the basement, but it was like the first floor mm -hmm. and they just wanted to do something totally different. So they gutted it out and created a new type of space, um, which is, you know, really visionary of them. So a lot of this was existing, like the back yeah. portion of the design. And then oh, we okay. you know, made it work uh, for what they wanted in their in their theater. That's neat. That's very neat. Oh, here we go with the more lights the again. LED lights. Yeah. yeah, that's just, boy, is it set off the room. Yeah, it does. It helps, you know, that client in particular, um, originally we looked at not, you know, the walls were just going to be the acoustics with the fabric on top and, you know, everything, all the technology was going to disappear behind the fabric. And then, you know, that's kind of one of the good things about our design service program that I, I know we'll talk about here in a little bit, but yep. is that, you know, we walked them through the process and got to these 3D renderings and they looked at it and they said, you know, we just, we just want something else. You know, we want something a little bit more vibrant. And then that's when we were able to add the LED lights and really make it what they, you know, were envisioning. So you're know, going through this process and, um, you know, with us and, and helping you get to kind of the final end and what the theater is going to look like before you even build it is you know is a, a cool a cool thing so do you get real iron man suits with this uh <laughs> i mean yeah. sign me up for that one <laughs> <laughs> this client had all the memorabilia so oh uh, yeah really cool. <laughs> very interesting room Oh. Okay, here's another, to me, looks more like a family room, you know, family yep. room space. And Absolutely. and you only brought the LEDs up like that. That's a really cool, neat design. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yep. And there it is again, so more like a family room. Yep. That's beautiful. Just some of the today, you know, what we're seeing as far as uh, of trends today and, and building these rooms. I did have a uh, question here. Maybe you guys can direct me on your website. I might be able to find it. Is so any examples of projects that have prioritized function over form? Maximum maybe performance was the primary goal and the aesthetics were secondary. So maybe not a, a fully done up room when it comes to the LED lights and the star ceilings and those kind of things, but just, just functionality of to maximize the AV performance. I don't know if you guys off the top of your head know anything or a project that uh that may have that just a question that's out there i'm sure you've done them right oh yeah stacy do you want to do you want to take that one well i'm trying to think uh, do you have one in particular go for it if you do well yeah i mean i think that's a lot of our clients are like that i mean that's kind of okay. one of the things we'll ask when we first start is are you we you know, the, the client that's more the audiophile and very, you can kind of gauge quickly where people are if they're really, really into design and color and this and that, or if they're really into sound. And when that's the case, like we're, we're doing a job right now in Florida where they haven't even built out the space. And so we're working on all of the ratios to make sure that it's, ex it's the perfect way that it should be, that mm -hmm. the width, the height, the space from the screen, um, the sound isolation, so the sound leaving the room. Um, there's there are there are ways and better practices that you can do that if the more control we have in the project and the earlier we get brought into the project, we're able to design towards that. Um, there are some designs that are not going to be as 
favorable for sound. Maybe there's wood going up too high or there's, no, we like to treat at least three walls acoustically um, and have at least 80% acoustically treated. We, you know, if you treating the ceiling can help correct about seven to 10% of noise in, in the space. Um, so there's a lot of different things depending on, you know, what's important to the client that we will prioritize based off those goals. Mm -hmm. What's neat about our system is that it's cut on site and designed for the space. So yeah. we customize it to what your room is. So, so every room's different. Some rooms need certain absorptive, reflective, diffusive, more of it, less of it. Um, and so we're able to engineer that based off, you know, what equipment and goals we have in, in your theater. So on that note, great segue, Alex, because there's another question that just popped up here that says, are there acousticians who perform these measurements? I use commercial studio sound absorbers in key areas like walls and ceilings for first reflection points, then calibrate with Odyssey, but leave base to multi XT32. Is this good enough? So it sounds like he's just, you know, he's, he's using some good practices. I mean, the, your first reflection points are certainly are key, but do you guys actually use acousticians? Yes, we have a sound engineer who actually created our product, the Acoustic Room System. He created the product 15 years ago, and um, we bought his company, and he is now been our engineer for, you know, since the concept and the product was patented and developed. So he still actually looks and designs every room and takes a couple days drawing it out. Um, looking at different things. And I think it's, he does a computer model, but I, I really think it's technical, a big portion of it's technical and another portion of it is art. And having done so many rooms and heard, you know, he's been doing this the majority of his career. So, um, but yes, to answer the question, we do have an acoustical engineer on staff who's handling that portion. Wonderful. So on that note, as we just kind of wrapped up a little bit talking about um, just some general theater guidelines some design trends that we're seeing, um, let's roll into a little bit more of this part of it in terms of dealing with building the room and getting the sound right. Uh, so with room and sound treatment, um, there's, there's two kind of paths that either people go, they, they can do both, but sometimes it's one or the other. And that's the difference between sound isolation and acoustic treatment. Um, so as we get into this, I wanna bring Stacy in, cause this is really what you do a lot of in terms of building these rooms um, is dealing with this aspect right here. So why don't you start talking about what sound isolation is and, and how is that different from just say treating a room with sound absorbers and things like that? Absolutely, yeah. So. Um... One of the, the first, just to kind of, I guess, back up a little bit, but yeah, one of the first things when I'm meeting with a client that I ask them is, you know, how important is sound isolation to you? And, and just to kind of back up the difference between, broad overview, difference between sound isolation and your the acoustics within the room is sound isolation is really the transfer of sound from either inside of the room to outside or vice versa. Okay. Um, and so some people are, you know, really concerned with that. If the room is in a basement or on one side of the house and all the bedrooms are on the other, they may be less concerned if the bedroom is right next door or the bedroom is above or they have a kitchen, something like that. Mm -hmm. then they might be more concerned with sound isolation and what needs to be done. And then on the other side of that is going to be the acoustical treatment and the acoustical treatment. And we've kind of touched base on this throughout kind of this whole program so far um, is that's going to be the acoustic panels and properties that are outfitted inside the room that helps to control the sound. So it's going to optimize the sound performance and make the room sound its absolute best. So um, I guess then flipping back over now to sound isolation, um, there are really different levels of isolation that you can go to, again, depending on how important it is to you um, and, you know, what the budget is for the sound isolation and also the space that you have. Um, you can do things where 
um, there's a product, mass loaded vinyl. It's basically an eighth inch thick mass loaded vinyl that you can attach to the studs of your walls, um, on your ceiling. You can even run it on the floor if you want to. Um, that's very minimal. It's minimal in cost um, and installation, but it does help with stopping that transfer of sound and stopping those vibrations from leaking outside of the room. And that's kind of an entry level, um, kind of stepping up to the next level. You can do uh, maybe two layers of sheetrock, or there's a product called uh, quiet rock that we, we use a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just going to help to add mass, which mass is always your friend um, when you're trying to deal with sound transfer from in and out of the room or vice versa. Hmm. And those all take up minimal space requirements. Um, if you want to go further than that, there are clips that are going to help to de decouple the room. And, and I, don't, I don't think we have a picture offhand, but <laughs> it basically set, it's a clip that goes on the framing and it separates your framing from your sheetrock or quiet rock, whatever you end up using in that 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 helps to absorb that sound transfer from stopping it from going into the framing into the rest of the house. Okay. Um, and then you can also do a room within a room, which that's basically two, you know, two framed walls, one inch air gap in between, and then you can build on the inside of that. So there's really many different levels. Um, when I'm meeting with a, a client in the beginning, again, I ask them, you know, what are we looking at? What's you know, how much space do we have to accomplish what we need to? And then we kind of engineer a system um, or the best solution and specifications that for their particular project. Hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's when we're talking about sound isolation. Um, okay. And then, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, so then moving into, I guess you were going right there, <laughs> anyway, but moving into what we'll call your, you know, your tracking system and kind of what Cinematech does a lot of, um, uh, I don't know if you want me to, do you want me to bring up that, uh, the, yes. the IRS, would that be good? Yeah, for that would okay. be great. Yeah. And just kind of to touch base, uh, you know, there are, there are a couple different systems out there. Um, while Adam's bringing up our, our little presentation here to show what, what Cinematech ARS is, um, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that do prefabricated panels. Um, Cinematech ARS is a track-based system. Um, what the, the benefit of doing a track-based system over a prefabricated panel is that the prefabricated panel is going to be fabricated somewhere off-site. Um, they're going to make it whatever size they think it needs to be, whether it's dependent on dimensions that were given by, you know, you or, or maybe your integrator or whoever it may be builder, yeah. they're going to, they're going to wrap it, fix it. They're going to ship it out to the site. You're going to put it in. Most likely what's going to happen is that maybe the walls weren't built exactly straight or plumb with the ceiling or something might be a little bit off. Um, and when you put those panels in, you might see a gap at the top or the panels may have to be unwrapped and shaved down and rewrapped and put up. Um, whereas when you go into a track based system, which is what Cinematech ARS is, um, that is all cut and field finished. And I know Alex touched on that briefly earlier, but everything is, is cut on site and it's field finish so our guys are going to show up with eight foot lengths of track and the track mm -hmm. is what holds the fabric into place they're going to show up with um two foot by four foot panels and there's three properties to the panel so it's an engineered system mm -hmm. um, and it's all engineered according to the room and they're going to cut everything down on site put it in and then they're going to stretch the fabric and all the technology is going to go go away behind the fabric mm -hmm. um, the other thing with a, a prefabricated panel versus a, a track based system is you know over time that prefabricate free uh, prefabricated panel the fabric on that is typically glued and stapled to the back right and um, where a track you're actually tucking fabric into a track piece that has teeth so it's going to hold it in place over time whereas glue as we all know will deteriorate and sometimes the fabric ends up sagging um, and then the last thing on a track versus a, a panel um, uh, based system is um Sorry, I just lost my train of thought here. This is why we're live, right? <laughs> this is why we're live, yeah. And you're talking about how the glue, you know, glue falling off and glue staying in place. For yes. The oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sure. Okay. Um, so the 
um, over time with a track based system, let's say that you want to come in and, and change out the fabric for whatever reason. You don't want it to be blue anymore. You want the room to be pink or, you know, whatever it may be. With a track based system, you can pull that fabric out and you can retuck a new fabric without having to take down all the paneling. In a prefabricated panel, that's not the case. You're going to be ripping down those panels, refabricating and, and then putting them back up. So that's kind of right. just a brief overview of, um, you know, of the advantages of a track based system. Right. And then with that, the acoustic room systems, which is is a Cinematex product, what we're offering here, it is an engineered system and it, its makeup is going to be of three different panels. So absorption, reflection and diffusion right. um, and all three panels are in those systems. So we're not just looking at an absorptive panel. I do know there's a lot of companies out there that do do um, just absorption and that absorbs your high frequencies, but that's about all it does. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk into a room that that just has absorption in them when you walk into it sometimes you feel like it you have a head cold like something's not right yeah. and that's not how you want your room to perform when you walk into your room you want to feel comfortable you're definitely going to feel a difference between an untreated room versus when you walk into a treated room but mm -hmm. it should be a sense of calmness not that you're stuffed up <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense so, no it does that's, uh, that's what happens when uh, i bring people into our theater at on the showroom you know and i shut that door it's it, it things just sound right you know it's like you said it's calming things just sound like they're supposed to so that's that's the advantage of getting you know people like us involved to do this that way yeah. um so yeah so with cinema tech ars it's a, an inch and a quarter profile um, and as I mentioned, there are three properties. What you're looking at here, this is what we call our diaphragmatic absorber. So on one side, we have an inch of fiberglass, so it is going to absorb your high frequencies. Um, you know, you have to have it in, in every room. Um, and on the other side, it's going to be a quarter inch of sheetrock laminated to it. And when that side is out, so this is interchangeable. So sometimes the soft side will be out, some side sometimes the hard side will be out. It's going to reflect your high frequencies so that we keep your room live. Cause again, we don't, there you go. Thanks Adam. Sure. We don't want to over deaden the space. Um, you still want to be able to hear the articulation and the speech and mm -hmm. whatnot. And, and so we do still need some of those hard surfaces. Sure. And then a final panel that we have that this is our diffusive panel. This is typically located around your surrounds and rears, and it's going to open up your sound stage um, so that you don't hear, say you have a scene in the room where you've got a train going around your surround. You're not hearing that train come from one speaker to the other, to the other, to the other. You're hearing it going nice and smooth around the back of you as, as it should be. Totally. Yep. And then, and then that other piece that you see there, that was just oh, the track. That's okay, Adam. The the, um, the the extruded plastic piece, that's the track that holds the fabric in place. I thought I had that. That's, <laughs> that's okay. You're doing a very good sure. job. I'm sure. <laughs> it's a pretty uh, so, good close-up picture. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, the, the when, when you guys get involved, you know, and I'll show this to you a little bit later. You know, you have plans down to, you know, like kind of perfect that tell the, whoever your contractor is or builder that you're using to help build out the room with the preparations that need to be made. So this is what we're showing here. Step one would be to what install, you know, all the speakers in the wall. Yeah. So this just kind of gives a, a, a three picture brief overview of how the acoustics go in. Okay. Um, and you're right, going through our design process, we're going to call out all those details in a set of drawings. But just mm -hmm. as a visual, this shows a room that's ready and prepped for us. So obviously we have the sheetrock up. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we're going to have some columns as part of the design. We've got blocking in because the one thing you have to remember is that the product does have depth. It's a small depth. It's all within an inch and a quarter, mm -hmm. um, but it does have a depth. So any moldings like your base mold, molding, your crown molding, your door casings all need to be blocked out that inch and a quarter so that they stand proud as they would on a regular sheet walk, re, sheet rock wall. So uh, you've got your base blocking, you've got your crown blocking in, and you've got your speakers in. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything, every exposed surface is painted prior to us getting there. Then we come in, we lay the track in whatever, the fabric track in whatever design um, that we're trying to accomplish. In this case, we're going to do some horizontal seams. You'll see a fabric change, fabric color change in the next slide. But um, so we're, we're laying our track in the design of the room and the mm -hmm. way we want 
the fabric to lay out. Then we're going to fill in all the spaces with the three parts of the acoustic panels. And again, as Alex had mentioned, this is all engineered according to the room. Um, so we're looking at hard and soft surfaces in the space. We're looking at seating locations. We're looking at speaker types. Um, and we are putting uh, and we are engineering the room according to that and putting those panels in their appropriate locations. Have you ever had a situation where I just thought of this now, like with the, you know, with the diffusion panels in the back, again, this, this hard you know, material that's kind of spreading the sound around to make the, the transfer of sound go. If has a client ever come to you and said, look, I know it's not right, but I really like surround sound effects like to be accentuated or, 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 or uh, exaggerated, I guess is the word. Um, and then would you take, you know, we would do more of this then has that ever happened? Yeah, we can. Yeah, absolutely. We can modify. Um, we can modify the system according to the client's needs. Obviously, our, as Alex had mentioned, our engineers have been doing this a long time. Um, and so they've seen a lot of things, but every yeah. client is different and every expectation is different. So, yeah, if we have a client that wants a room that's more live, then and we know that, then we can make adjustments as necessary. Again, that's the great thing about the product is it's, yeah. it's you know, it can be uh, modified to the room and the expectations. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Step four. Yep. So then this just shows this is uh, the finished product here. The fabric has been tucked. We've done kind of a gradating fabric look just to show you, you know, the, we can do horizontal seams and, and different things. But all of the the acoustic uh, technology and the speakers are, you know, are you can't see them anymore. And and another important thing that I want to bring up with this picture is that obviously we do have the acoustic product behind the fabric. We do have speakers behind the fabric. Yep. So in part of our process, we edge educate, um, you know, we really try to educate the client and the parties involved um, as to using why it's important to use an acoustically transparent fabric. Uh, a fabric that breathes essentially so that right. the acoustic panels can do their jobs and the speakers can fire through the fabric, um, and, you know, and, and not get disrupted in that, that sense. So certainly mm -hmm. talk about the materials. There you, there. Go. there you go. One slide. Behind. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for, for kind of walking us through that there. I did want to, um, where'd it go? So there were some questions that kind of popped up here that I want to get back to. And see, Peter's asked, I'm assuming that your systems are five point five to one, seven to one systems. Have you ever done an ambient loop system? And I'm kind of, Peter, I'm kind of confused as to what you mean by ambient loop. I'm going to assume that you mean the newer surround sound formats, like 3D object-based systems, uh, which is Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. Stacy and Alex, you kind of thinking what I'm thinking here? That's what he's kind of asking. Yeah, I think yeah so. that's not our we're not i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i think i think that's what peter means i would ambient loop i'm just kind of thinking of like ambient uh, atmos like yeah. uh, kind of thinking the 3d of yeah that's the 3d object based systems and absolutely i mean most of the theater spaces that are that we're doing now are i would say 7.4.4 systems absolutely. uh which is comprised of so you have so let's see your tv's right here you have three speakers up front so that's three and then you have your side surround speakers that makes five. Then you have your surround back speakers that makes seven. And that's kind of this plane of sound. Okay. And then your, your next step right there is how many woofers do you have? So four is, is what we like to do in theaters, two in the front and two in the back. So that's the dot four. And then the other dot four is the Atmos speakers in the ceiling. And you want to do them typically kind of in a, I think on now oh, I'm going to step on Stacy's toes a little bit here. I just want to make sure I'm speaking properly, but on uh, some of the research I've done, it's about 35 to 55 degrees from the seated position, kind of front and back mm -hmm. in terms of that spread or where you want. Yes, I got mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. All right. So to, to, to be right there for you. And that's where you want those front and rear Atmos speakers to be. And, and Peter, those are the common systems I think that we're, we're doing for theaters. Certainly the more research you do on Dolby Atmos and DTSX, I mean, you can have 16 speakers in the ceiling and I mean it can get really really crazy with the Atmos channels that, that are out there so uh, yes we've done it all yes they've done it all and we can certainly do it so hope that answers your question if you want to follow up with that and anything we missed let it let us know um, this is a good one too I like this question how does placing back ported speakers in front of a window affect the sound sorry for the late question couldn't get my chat to work he probably was having a thunderstorm as well um, <laughs> 
Yeah, a, a porthole like on on the back of a speaker when you fire it at the wall. Well, I'll let Alex. Uh, do you know? Do you, I mean it? it it reflects it. It shoots right off the wall, <laughs> and so you end up with this big kind of bloom of sound. So um, I'm sur sure you guys can help with that in, in terms of adding absorption. But that's where you want to get us involved. Tell us about the room. Tell us about what your goals are, you know, and what kind of speakers you have. And certainly, Stacy and Alex would take that into consideration in building a room to control the sound. As as Alex talked about earlier, you know, they want to control that reflection. We can't avoid the reflection, but we certainly want to control it. So um, yes, it does <laughs> affect the sound uh, sometimes in a, in a good way or a bad way. And that depends on you too. I mean, I know sometimes when you push a speaker closer to the wall and you get that big boom off the back wall, some people like that, you know, mm -hmm. and that's how you want your sound. Everybody wants to hear their sound the way they want to hear their sound. So good things to think about. Wow, so we really went went deep there with uh, talking about you know the room, and that's great. I'm sure everybody out there appreciates it to better understand controlling the room and what makes you know a track based system like you talked about. Um, I think much better because it's custom tailored. You know, everybody likes the feel of a nice custom tailored suit, dress, whatever. It feels great, and, and that's what these systems are. They're they're built in your home for you. Your new theater that you designed. Did you redo all the acoustics as well in that when you when you rebuild? Oh, I mean, yeah. you, just, you, you tore yeah. it down. And Rebuild yep. it. Oh, God. We, we changed the whole size of the room too. We actually moved out a wall um, and whatnot. We, ch yeah, total total demo and new construction. Oh yeah. man! So what and was? We got, we got the projector out of the room too, which was great. <laughs> we have a whole projection room behind it, which we didn't before. So uh, it really That's makes cool. it look clean and slick. Yeah. So you just have like a window, I guess, that, that it kind yeah. of yeah. through. That, I yep. think That's yep. really cool. Yep. What, so did they bring everybody in for the company? What was the first demo that they put on that system there? Do you remember? So I'm trying to think of the one. I, we So to be completely honest, we're getting ready to get everyone in the company because of what's been going on. Hasn't come in, hasn't come oh, yeah, in yeah. yet. And right, we're right, gonna right, do right. that in mid June. Um, and, but yeah, we've, we've definitely had some cool demos. I've still working out. Um, the sound and the picture, and I've been working with all the guys to get okay. that right. Um, but uh, we, the one, the one demo that I love is sound-wise is that Eric Clapton, the mm -hmm. Layla, is awesome okay. because you can really just hear. You feel like you're in the concert, um, and you can really feel and experience the instruments and you can just you can hear all those little sounds that you know you don't think of like you're right there in mm -hmm. it and so that it, it's a really cool experience um for sure yeah Alex, Stacey, do you have a favorite Alex? Stacey did a demo for me like two weeks ago what was that movie with the the uh the circus and it, yes and it just it just my mind just went blank because I was just thinking about that um it was really good we we used yeah. to do gravity as a demo, okay. Um, because the movie was Sandra Bullock, I think that's the name. Um, because it showed boominess and loudness, but it also showed silence and calmness, and you can really feel the acoustics in both situations, which was impactful. Got it. And the the, the demo was the greatest showman. Yes. Thank you, Emma. Oh. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Completely so. slipped my mind, but that first scene where the horses come in and you can hear the people stomping their feet on the bleachers, you can just, the impact is, is really neat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love concerts. I like watching watching a lot of uh, concerts recently. I just got, uh, so there was an Ed Sheeran live at Wembley that I watched, which was oh. really cool. It was a three-day event. He played, they, you know, 240,000 people over over three days. And prior to that, you know, the biggest thing he had done was maybe a couple thousand. So it was quite the big adventure, a good story. Um, and just, you know, it's he's fun to watch and it sounds great. It looks fantastic too. So that's a good one. And, uh, oh, I didn't get to watch it yet, but where is it? Uh, I'm a sucker for Foreigner. So I got that one. <laughs> that's the next one I'm gonna watch. Come on, who doesn't love, love, you know, Double Vision and Waiting for a Girl Like You? These are classics. So I can't wait to watch <laughs> I just got it yesterday, so I haven't watched that one yet. Um, but well, the job, go ahead. Another good one's Ford versus Ferrari. Yes, that was a great one. That the sound of that of that Shelby was outstanding. So 
guys, anybody out there have uh, has some favorites that they like to to demo on their theater systems? Let us know. Um, I want to bring something up here real quick. It's going to take me a second to get to it. Um, so let's uh, end. Well, we're getting close to the end here, but um, I talked earlier about you know partnering and how you know you guys are special uh, special partner with us because you're. I think one of the ones that really meets us in the field, <laughs> like we end up working together at the customer's house at the same time. I mean, again, we love, we love Samsung and Sony and all of our other, you know, vendors and partners and things like that. But it's special with Cinematech because we end up really working together on the project and, and doing, doing the installation together, which is really special. Um, so how does somebody, how do we start that process, Alex? What's, how do we get somebody involved with Cinematech? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, typically, they will approach worldwide and explain kind of what their vision is, send over any information that they have on their space with length, ceiling height, uh, maybe if they have some rough budgetary ideas. Mm -hmm. And then worldwide, we'll call Cinematech and we'll get usually on a virtual uh, go to meeting and we'll go through and you guys, you know, the client will usually kind of interview us. We'll discuss what our services are, see if it's a good fit. And then about 80% of the time, we'll then enter into our design service program, which is where we'll all collaborate uh, worldwide, Cinematech, the client, if there's a designer, um, whomever is making those decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, clients want just acoustics or they want just seating and we don't go through the design process, but we find that that's really not as common because there's so much value in having us involved as kind of a consultant as well on the project. So to answer your question, call worldwide and they'll find us and we'll get, we'll get chatting. Well, yeah. well, we'll get going on that certainly. And here we have a little, uh, a quick, uh, something I want to show here. Let me get to it. This is hard navigating all these screens. Here, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so this is the design service program, and it gives you a good concept here of what it takes to go through it. And some of the stuff I wanted to, to show from this here it starts right here, guys. This is what I'm talking about that Stacy spends the bulk of her day, I'm sure, looking at all day uh, are these kinds of designs. And you can see the level of detail that goes into it when, when they're done. You know, they're, we're, we're handing over those keys to that, that that builder, you know, to get this thing going. And they know everything that they need to do. Because um, look at the, I mean, the detail of where all the measurements are, of where things need to be. Um, you know, placement of the speakers in the walls. And then you're looking at, uh, where's the sight line one? I love that one. It's one of my favorite. Look at where the projector needs to be. And then boom, right? Yeah. So you have where the projector is up here in the back of the room, okay, with the riser heights. And then you have your screen right here and all these lines. And I, I remember working on the project I was working on. We, we danced with this back and forth because the, the, the customer wanted to have the absolute biggest screen that they could do. But we had ceiling height limitations, as most people do in these spaces. So, you know, it was, do you mind ducking a little bit? <laughs> That's a question that you have to have. But we ended up with a terrific uh, finished project. But, you know, these are the, the level of these when you go through these design uh, meetings with Cinematech. And right now, actually, there is a special going on. Contact us and your email us if you want to get in on this. Uh, there is a special on the design service right now. You can save a little bit of money to get these these uh, these drawings and materials going. And then, you know, the one thing that you do need to, they can help you find the material. Like if you want carpet or something like that, they can make recommendations and, and let you know where you can actually source that from. Because I'm sure it would cost a lot to ship the carpet from your location, <laughs> given, given the weight of it and stuff like that. So, um, but all those details are, are in these designs. And again, here's some more. Then when you're done with your concept, they're going to say, okay, this is what we talked about. Here's what it could look like. You know, and this is where you make your final final uh, adjustments to your overall system. There's that blue again. Wait, this is your room. This is the yep, new. This is the chat room. Okay. There you go. Yep. yep. I love that. So you're going to get these drawings, and you can really see. I mean, here's and look at this. So there is a 3D render. Which one's the 3D render? Which one's the real one? <laughs> huh? What do you think? 
So, so it, the one on the one on the we left. won't give it away. We won't, we won't give it away. It away. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see how the detail in these in the rendering ends up being, you know, what the room looks like in the end. I mean, that's that's how specific these instructions are or the the designs are. That's how good these people are. So definitely awesome to get them get them and and us involved in, in making your space. But again, don't we forget it doesn't have to be a dedicated theater space. It could be a family room. And that's uh, something that you can see on, on Cinematech's website. They have the new like family room just treating like a wall or the offices like we talked about earlier in the beginning. It can be all these interesting spaces um, to, to uh, help treat. Oh, here we go. Here's some good, yeah, Ready Player One. That's a great demo. I love that one. <laughs> and who doesn't love The Dark Knight? Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't seen this one. Blu-ray BB King live at Montreal in 1983. I'll have to grab that, Weldon. Thank you. Who doesn't love BB King? <laughs> Gosh. Um, and last but not least, folks, I want to. Where is it? There it is. We have a lot of examples on our on our webpage, uh, Worldwide Stereo, and I'll show that to you here again. Of just so some installations that we have certainly done. Here's our projects, well, car stereo included, but of spaces, of different spaces that we've done, whether it was a dedicated room, whether it was a family room, um, outdoor things, but you know, specifically speaking to Cinematech and what they can do for spaces. I mean, we have a lot of examples of these different kinds of rooms that you can check out on our website. And like I said, reach out to us with any questions or if you're thinking about starting a project to uh, get us involved, like I said earlier, earlier the better. Let us handle the uh, the stress of, of putting it together for you because we've done it lots of times. So Absolutely. we're going to take another 30 seconds to see if there's any other follow-up questions that are coming across. Um, here is our information to everybody out there. You can call us or email us for any follow-ups or questions, or if you have a project you're starting and want to get us involved, let us know. Okay. Stacy, Alex, the hour's gone by. <laughs> Yes, it has. <laughs> thank you, it was fun. Yes, oh, thank, thank you guys you again. So we much. really appreciate your time. I know everybody's really busy right now, so thank you for carving out an hour and spending it with me and my friends here and talking to how to design a theater and everything, those kind of things that you got to think about. You guys do a wonderful job, so um, thank you again. Well, thank you. Thank Thanks, you, everyone, everyone, for listening in. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, Thanks, everybody, Adam. you have a wonderful afternoon. This is Adam with Worldwide Stereo reminding you to listen to music every day. So long. <laughs> Bye.